while Trump and Musk are sorting out their relationship and the future prospects of the company. In Russia, the production of the first rocket engine, 0124 MS liquid engine, has been completed and it is being prepared for launch as part of the newest Soyuz 5 rocket later this year. What makes its engines unique and why do they have no equals in the world? How is the preparation for the Luna 27 mission progressing? We will talk about this, about the new hero, and also give an educational recommendation after a brief summary of, of positive news. A sea tanker of Project 23,630 has been laid down at the Okskaya shipyard. A tugboat of Project TSK-395M has been launched at the Cherpovitz shipbuilding plant. A dredger of Project 9359 has been laid down in the Astrakhan region, and barges of Project RBD-4608 have been launched at the Nizhny Novgorod shipyard. In Perm, a self-propelled cleaning vessel in the Chelyabinsk region, a plant for the production of microcalcite has been opened. In the Moscow region, production of boat engines. In Kazan, production of spiral wound pipes. In the Sverdlovsk region, production of materials for making optical glass. In Petrozavodsk, a woodworking enterprise. In the Ryazan region, a food production facility. And in the Ivanovo region, a dairy farm. The Chemical Automation Design Bureau has completed the production of a flight model engine for the second stage of the Soyuz 5 rocket, which is expected to launch in December. This is a medium-class rocket with increased payload capacity, capable of delivering 17 tons of payload to low Earth orbit. For comparison, today's workhorse of domestic cosmonautics, Soyuz 2.1b, delivers 8 tons, while the American Falcon 9, in its reusable version, delivers 17 and a half tons. Thus, we get a launch vehicle that will occupy the niche between the Soyuz 2.1B and the Russian Angara A5, which has a payload capacity of 24 tons. And this is important since 17 tons is the optimal value for launching medium-class satellites, geostationary satellites, and promising crewed missions. It would be wasteful to use the heavy Angara for this. It's worth remembering that Zenit was previously used for these purposes. The rocket that we produced together with Ukraine, more precisely, we produced it during Soviet times as part of a single country. But after the collapse of the Soviet Union, its assembly ended up in Ukraine, although a significant part of the components, including the engine, were produced in Russia. The events of 2014 put an end to that cooperation as well. We focused on developing our own Ingera rocket line and now also the Soyuz 5 rocket. Its first test flight is scheduled to take place in December of this year. Recently, Roscosmos showed the first stage of the Soyuz 5 at the Scientific and Testing Center of the Rocket and Space Industry, where cold and hot stand tests are being conducted. And now it has become known that the second stage engine is ready. And here's why this is interesting. The Piatiorka consists of two stages. The first stage uses the rocket engine, 171 MV engine, developed by Scientific Production Association Energomash, named after academician Glushko. This is a direct descendant of the famous rocket engine, 170, which lifted the giant energy rocket with the reusable spacecraft Buran into the sky. Its further modification, the rocket engine, 171M was used for three decades in the Zenit family of launch vehicles. Despite its power, the engine turned out to be economical and reliable, and also suitable for reusable use. A whole line of engines for launch vehicles of different classes was created based on it. So, by splitting the rocket engine 170 in half, they got the rocket engine 180, which the Americans bought from us for a long time for their Atlas V rockets. By splitting the rocket engine 180 and half again, they got the rocket engine 191 for our Angara A5 rockets. Another export modification, the rocket engine 181,
was used in the United States as the first stage engines of the Antares rocket. Now the new rocket engine, 171MV engine for the 5, has incorporated the best features of its predecessors, but received a new control system, improved fire protection, and a number of other technological and design solutions. But most importantly, it became the most powerful liquid rocket engine in the world. With its own weight of 10 tons, it produces a thrust of 800 tons. For its outstanding combination of characteristics, the engine received the unofficial name Tsar Engine. At the moment, the rocket engine, 171 MV, has passed all tests with confirmed characteristics and is awaiting its first flight as part of the Soyuz 5. But the second stage of the new rocket is also a kind of engineering masterpiece. Its engine, the rocket engine, 1,224 units, with a thrust of 60 tons, holds the record among all oxygen kerosene engines in the world. The specific impulse of thrust is 361 units. With a thrust of 60 tons, it has a record specific impulse of 361 units among all oxygen kerosene engines in the world. It has a record specific impulse of 361 units among all oxygen kerosene engines in the world. Specific impulse is the main indicator of a rocket engine's efficiency, meaning how effectively it converts fuel into thrust. This is critically important because every extra kilogram of fuel requires even more fuel to lift it. So, the rocket engine 0124MS is the most efficient among all its counterparts that run on similar fuel. That's why the Soyuz 5 turns out to be a truly unique product. But to create it, many modern solutions and unconventional approaches had to be used from digital design to the use of special aluminum alloys and welding methods. The Russian engineering school has once again demonstrated its highest level of excellence. However, the work does not stop there. New challenges lie ahead. Soyuz Payat is necessary for launching Russian spacecraft. But if we talk about global competition, then to compete with Falcon 9, despite having similar payload capacity, it lacks the ability to return its stage. However, work is already underway on the next level rocket, Aimer SPG, a two-stage rocket with sequentially connected rocket blocks. Amur. It will operate on liquid oxygen and liquefied natural gas using first stage block return technology for reuse. At the first stage of flight tests, it is planned to ensure at least 10 flights of the reusable first stage of AIMR, and in the future, this number will be increased to 100. Flights will begin by the year 2030 and will be carried out from the Vostokny Cosmodrome. Along with this, another piece of good news has arrived. At Lavochkin Research and Production Association, the final tests of the landing device model for the Luna 27 automatic station have been completed. Specialists have practiced soft landing modes in conditions as close to real as possible. The failure of the Luna 25 mission did not affect our determination to accomplish what we set out to do. In total, we intend to launch six automatic devices for remote and contact research. Among them will be the orbital Luna 26 and Luna 29, as well as the lander modules Luna 27 Luna, 1 and Luna 2, Luna 2, 8 and Luna 30. We will have to study the North and South Poles, where the largest concentrations of ice have been found, and collect soil for analysis. We also plan to send lunar rovers to study the terrain and prepare for the placement of a future lunar station. As for past failures, science does not progress without them. For example, last week during an attempt to land on the Moon, the Japanese lunar module Hakuto-R was lost. The previous attempt in 2023 also ended in failure. But the Japanese are not planning to shut down their program because of this. We must also persistently keep moving forward and never give up. This applies not only to the field of space exploration, but to all other areas as well. Success favors perseverance, and we have plenty of it. Next is an educational recommendation and the story of the feet. Every year, about 300 new large-scale productions open in Russia. Each of them has digital control systems, but where there are digital systems, 
there are vulnerabilities and hacker attacks. That's why, even by law now, enterprises in critical infrastructure and the defense industry must have their own cybersecurity specialists. But it's not just government facilities that are attacked. Businesses are also under threat from banks to delivery services. Forward, forward. Overcome your fear and doubt.